Oh, good morning, Rachel. How are you today? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? I'm great, thank you. We're coming to you from Toronto, and I have to tell you, I love this show. It is so fantastic. I cannot get enough of it. Thank I can't you. even imagine that when you got this offer, you were like, yeah, it didn't even take two seconds to say, I'm in. Oh, I, I don't, I, I was in, they knew I was in long, long before that point. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about playing Midge because, first of all, it's from the creators of the Gilmore Girls. So you already know that the dialogue, everything is going to be so witty and fast and, you know, zippy, yeah. zippy quick. Um, but tell us a little bit about her because she's she's just, you can't not love her. Yeah, she, she's pretty amazing. I mean, Midge is one of the most, if not the most unapologetically confident character that I had ever read and certainly that I have ever played. And... And we need more women like that on TV. I know a lot of women like that. That's what my world looks like. And so I'm, I'm proud to be, to be playing one of these women. And uh, I, I've, I've loved everything about playing Midge. She's smart, she's sharp, she's singularly focused. She doesn't yeah. know how to do anything halfway. <laughs> um, and she doesn't know any way but forward. <laughs> Absolutely. And I want to know about your prep to play a nice Jewish girl in the 50s. <laughs> yeah. Well, honestly, when I read the script, it the world felt like home to me in a way. Yeah. I, I grew up in a predominantly Jewish suburb of the North Shore of Chicago, on the North Shore of Chicago, and was welcomed with open arms into this community, into into seders and bar and bat mitzvahs and holiday celebrations. And, yeah. and so this was a a world that that felt like home. I have such love and admiration for the community. So there wasn't a whole lot of prep there, fortunately. Yeah. Um, but I did try to immerse myself in the world of 1950s stand up. And I, I looked towards women like Jean Carroll and Phyllis Diller, Joan Rivers, these pioneering female comics at the time for inspiration. Yeah, I, I was going to say that because it very much it, it shows a little Joan Rivers, Phyllis Diller, exactly. But I, but what's interesting, um, especially in the beginning of the series, mm -hmm. um, her her standup comes from anger, obviously, things that are going on in her life, everything that goes bad. She goes to the club and she just lets loose. Do yeah. you think that the best comedy does come from anger? Yeah, it's, it comes from some kind of passion, right? You're, they say you're either laughing or you're crying, and she's choosing laughing. Well, a little bit of crying in there too, but but uh, <laughs> but this is the only way she knows how to process and deal with this enormous trauma that she's experiencing in real time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also, you know, the thing I always feel about stand-up coming up, I've interviewed so many comedians over the years, and I always say to them, I go. I think that getting up on the stage is probably one of the hardest jobs ever. What what was it like for you to even, you know, even just to get up on that stage yeah. and, and perform in front of an audience? And I know you've been on Broadway, you know you've done theater, but it's a whole different beast. It it, it absolutely is. And, and honestly, in that same vein, I can't claim to have ever done stand-up or have any idea what it's like to do it. it I don't, those people are insane. I don't know how they get up on stage and put their whole selves and their self-worth out there like that. I, I was playing a character in a very controlled environment with an audience that was there being paid to laugh at my jokes. Right. And if they weren't funny, I got to do it 30 more times until I got it, you know. Uh, it was nerve-wracking performing in front of that many people, but but at the same time, it's it doesn't hold a candle to to real stand-up comedy. I bow down to those people. I'm I'm in awe. Yeah, yeah, a very tough job I, for sure. I don't I don't know if I could stand up there and do that. Now you, this is a great cast that you get to work with. I do have yeah. to ask you about working with our Canadian boy Luke Kirby, who's playing Lenny oh. Bruce. Wow, he's amazing. He's amazing. I love Luke Kirby. We had such a good time working on this together, and he is so talented. That's that's a tall order to play yeah. someone as legendary as Lenny Bruce. And and it, it's been such a privilege to watch him work. And he, man, does he deliver. He just gets better and better as the season goes on. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's awesome. And and Alex Borstein, too. Mm. She's you know, she's she's great as well. She's phenomenal. <laughs> she's so smart and hilarious on and off screen. But she's also an insanely talented actor. She's the real deal, the complete package. And I, I'm, I'm so lucky. This entire cast has been so kind and generous and supportive and talented. It, it's not lost on me. 
Oh, that's so, I'm so excited to, for it to keep going. I really, I just love her adventures. Uh, the clothing. I mean, yeah. really? Like there's some, you wear that stuff really well, my dear. Wow. Hey, well, I have a lot of help. It, it actually, I'll let you in on a little secret, but it, it's all built for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, our costume designer, Donna Zikowska, has this crazy genius brain and just vomits out these incredible clothes. She's been inspired by, by French Vogue and by Audrey Hepburn and Grace Kelly. And she just creates these beautiful, they're, they're pieces of art. They really are. Yeah. And they get better and better and better as the season goes on. I, I can't wait to start season two. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, it really is just from top to bottom. Incredible. You know, it's funny. I, I really got to know know you a little bit when I started watching House of Cards. And I, and I mm. thought you were so awesome in that show. Thank but you. wow, that, Rachel, was such a heavy role. Like, yeah. I can't imagine that you would go home after every episode after you would wrap and go, wow, I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> it was tough. It was it was was a that was a really challenging role but but what a dream and what a gift I was straight out of college when when I ended up on that show and unexpectedly ended up on a lot more of that show than I thought I was going to be yeah. and and I was given the opportunity to stretch as an actor and to challenge myself and to work with Michael Kelly who is one of the most talented and generous and I can't emphasize how kind a person yeah. and, an, and an actor he is. Yeah, yeah, you were just so great on that show. I hope people still continue to watch it. I really do. Um, well, all I have to say is you are so outstanding Thank as you. Midge. I mean, I, we are going to see you accepting some awards next year for this because you really are fabulous. And I just have to say, or ask you, can you share your brisket recipe with me? My brisket recipe? I am a terrible, terrible cook. You do not want my brisket recipe. Although I, I'll, I'll tell you that my my dad, after the pilot came out, mailed me an identical yeah. pink Pyrex to the one that Midge <laughs> uses in the pilot. And, and I think it was both like a sweet gesture and also a little nudge, like, please learn to do something with this. <laughs> so I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for you. Please continue on with this fantastic show. You are so wonderful and uh, just a pleasure to talk to you. I hope that I get to meet you in person. Come to Toronto and we'll have Thank a coffee you. sometime, okay? Thank you. You as well. This is so nice. Thanks.